Hi guys, so uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about lighting and rendering. They both kind of feed into each other, so it's worth talking about them both at the same time. I'm going to start by talking about lighting. So I'm going to go through some of the main lights, how you can use them uh, to create different setups within your scene. Lighting is one of those things that you can use to really elevate quite a simple scene um, to the, kind of take it to that next level. Um, so dramatic or creative lighting that can really um, take your scene to that next level. So the, it's worth having the outliner open, that's this tab on the left. That shows you everything that's in the scene, but it can be really helpful for being able to select lights more easily because you'll see them all pop up there. You might have lots and lots going on, so you might need to scroll down. You can also search for stuff, so you can search for light um, in the outliner and it'll, they'll pop up. So that can be an easy way of selecting stuff uh, within your scene. I'm going to go from the poly modeling tab into this rendering tab and you can see the lights are all here, which goes back to what I was saying about lighting and rendering kind of being linked. If I click on the first light, this is the ambient light and it gives you, once I click on that, it gives you a little icon, like a kind of a sun icon. I'll move it over. Now it doesn't look like anything's happened, that's because lighting isn't turned on in the scene. There's different views that you can go into Maya. So four on your keyboard, that will go into wireframe mode, which means you'll see all just, just the edges unshaded displayed. Can be quite useful for being able to see things behind objects. Uh, and also if you've got quite a complicated scene, it kind of can make the computer run that much faster because it's not having to shade everything. Five moves into the shaded mode. That's what we're usually in by default. Six will turn textures on. So any images or textures will appear when you hit for, uh, six. I don't have any in my scene, so nothing's happened. Seven now turns lighting on. And now we can see what the ambient light has done. I'm going to select the ambient light. You can select it there or in the outliner. Um, and if I go to my attribute editor on the right, that brings up options for this light. So if you're in the right tab and you've brought up Attribute Editor, you should be able to change the intensity, change the color of the light. Now what the ambient light is doing is it is lighting the whole scene with this flat, non-directional lighting. So everything is being lit evenly. So it can be nice to give the scene this kind of like stylized 2D kind of look, if that's what you're going for. Um, the other thing it's useful for is kind of filling in shadows. So if you've got some really harsh lighting with harsh shadows, you can use it to kind of even it out a little bit and make it look a little bit less um, extreme. But yeah, so we'll come back to that for that reason. I'm going to turn it off for now so I can show you the next light. So I'm just going to select my ambient light and delete it. And I'm going to create a new light. So the next light uh, in this rendering tab is the directional light. And that comes up with an icon. Depending on the size of your scene, you might want to scale the icon up. That comes up with kind of these arrows that you can direct and point the light in different directions. At this stage, it might also be worth it, uh, worth turning on the shadow preview. So if I go to lighting just here and just turn shadows on, that will give you uh, some realistic uh, shadow previews which will kind of help you see what it'll be a bit look at, like in your render. Uh, bear in mind, this is just a preview. So when we come to render, we'll be rendering out much sharper, nicer looking uh, images than what we've got going on here. Okay, so that's the directional light. It doesn't actually matter where you put it in the scene. The light isn't generating from this point. This icon is just where you direct the light from. So the light is coming from a specific direction uh, wherever you put wherever you point this directional light but it's not actually emanating from this icon so if i create another light you'll kind of you kind of see this light will be emanating from uh from the icon so if i click on the next light which is the point light you can see that it's the light is actually emitting from this icon like a light bulb so this can be great for any kind of um you know like a lantern um, anything where the light is coming from a specific source within your scene, like a street lamp um, or a window, anything like that. So you can use that. What can look really nice is using lots of contrasting color in your light. So I could, for example, ch change this uh, directional light, 
click on it and change the color perhaps to a nice kind of blue color and I've already got a bit of contrast going on but if I go back to the point light I could for example add a little bit of a kind of a warmer tone so contrasting lighting especially if you contrast colors you can get a bit of a sunset feel I've got a kind of a blue a light coming in from the side and a kind of golden sunset um, coming in from the other side so just playing around and trying out different um, lighting scenarios can kind of help you come up with something a bit more interesting than just flat lighting so the next light I'm going to show you is this cone light it's a spotlight but it comes up like a cone show you what the icon looks like I'm going to scale it up just a little bit again my scene is quite large so I have to keep scaling up these um, the icons for these lights you, you probably won't need to but it's like a cone but you could use this like a flashlight um, any area that you want to specifically light up um, you can use this we can go down and we can also change uh, the drop off that's how kind of faded how faded it is so the edges will become a bit more faded I can turn up the intensity so this can be quite a useful light I can change the cone angle that's how kind of wide it will be um, so you can kind of mess around with the the angles again you can change with the color and you can change with the intensity you're not limited by any of these sliders you can put a higher value in um, to create different effects I'm going to get rid of the cone light for now so going back to the ambient light I was talking about these harsh shadows where no light is touching you can kind of fill in some of those areas with the ambient light perhaps keep it very low and I can change the colour to be a bit more of an interesting colour let's go blue or perhaps even green but that's filling in now some of those really dark areas um, yeah so you can try and you can try out different uh, lighting combinations two or three kind of main lights always looks best if you think about three-point lighting that'd be worth looking up um, but often three-point lighting will have a kind of a background light to separate the uh, the subject from the background um, a kind of a key light that fills in um, that's kind of your main light in the scene and then another light perhaps that kind of let's create another directional light that kind of fills in some of the shadows and makes it look a little bit less contrasty um, and a little bit nicer so kind of yeah finding a balance finding something that doesn't leave huge areas in darkness unless that's a very um, kind of stylized look or kind of look that you're going for but generally three-point lighting is kind of what you want to go for but try out different effects see what you can come up with you can try different scenarios what does it look like at night what does it look like at daytime what does it look at sunset the other thing that I will say before I let you go on is if you look on the point light it's worth looking at this decay rate so if it's set to no decay on a point light that means the light is going to kind of um, carry on unbroken um, for as far as it can whereas putting a decay on it means the light is going to fade away much more quickly so let me just put up this to like 40 let's put it a bit closer so you can see now that it's only lighting around the light itself so if you wanted a candle or a flashlight or something a bit smaller just like a specific area play with that decay rate you can make it um, cubic for example and now it's going to light only just around uh, the light itself so that decay rate is worth knowing about okay so I'm going to change it back to linear and pop this over here somewhere try and find uh, an area that I like 
let's create another one. So it will show you up to about uh, seven uh, lights at any one time in your scene. You can increase that if you've got more lights going on. I don't recommend going much higher than something like seven because it will start slowing your scene down. But if you go to renderer, viewport, and you, if, for example, a light isn't showing up and you've gone way over, you can increase the, the light limit and that will show you all the lights you've got in your scene. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is actually rendering these images. Once you've got a setup that you like, you can start trying to render some images out. These settings here are all to do with rendering. So this, um, these clapper boards, they all have different symbols on them. This one with the cog, this is your render settings. So if you click on that, now by default, it'll probably be set to Arnold Renderer. And this is where it gets a bit complicated. There are different renderers within Maya, which are kind of like software within software. The, the renderer is what's gonna render out those images and there's uh, different versions and different ways of doing it. Um, I recommend keeping it on Maya software. It's a little bit more straightforward than Arnold and you can get very nice results out of it. So I recommend using Maya. You can use Arnold if you want. Um, you might want to look up a different tutorial if you are going to use Arnold, but I recommend Maya. It's a little bit more simple. Um, we'll probably use Arnold in future projects, but Maya software. Um, so we've got two tabs here. We've got Maya software tab and we've got the common tab. Um, sticking in the common tab initially. So file output, that's just what the file is going to be called, so you can call it whatever you want. PNG format is nice, but you can use JPEG or whatever you want. Frame range, it will be if we're rendering video, so don't worry about that. Rangeable camera, that's probably on your perspective camera, unless you've made any other cameras. I haven't, so it might all be perspective. You can see down here, this is the perspective camera that we're looking through, and we're going to render that. Image size, so how big is your your actual image going to be. So we could put this up to 1080p. You might want to keep it low initially while you're doing kind of test renders and then put it up to 1080p because 1080p render can take a lot longer than a 540. So I'm going to stick with 540 just for this demonstration and you might want to yeah use it while you're testing it. You might want to keep it low and then go back and turn it up to 1080p. Up to you. Uh, I'm going to keep it do you know, I'll go for a middle ground and I'll go for 720p. So that'll still be HD, but not as HD as 1080p. I'm then going to go to the Maya software tab. And what's worth just making sure, I'd put the anti-aliasing up a little bit, perhaps go production quality. And just on this ray tracing tab, or ray tracing quality tab, just make sure ray tracing is ticked because that's going to give you those realistic shadows and reflections. So it's worth turning that on. Exit that. And now I'm going to render my first image. So we're going to click on this clapboard with no symbol on it. And it's going to start rendering out my image. Now, depending on what you've got going on and depending on the speed of your computer, this may take ages, it may take a few minutes. Um, or it may take a few seconds. So it depends on your computer and a lot of different factors, how many lights you've got, how complicated your scene is. Um, but you can see this is now rendered out my first image and we've got realistic shadows um, and lighting. So I'm just gonna exit that. But if I was happy with this image, I could right click, file, save image, or go file, save image. Just make sure that it's set to a PNG. and you can save it to your desktop. Just put in a name. So that's how you render an image. It's worth making sure that your lights, so if I go down through the attribute editor, go into shadows, go past these, use depth shadows. Don't, don't use the depth shadows, use ray trace shadows. It looks a lot nicer. It's worth making sure that you have ray tracing turned on. If you want your shadows to appear a little bit less sharp, so you can see the edges are very sharp to these shadows. we we'll use this light actually. So this is the point light that I have selected. Go down to ray traced shadow attributes. 
So go to your attribute editor with the light turned on, go to shadows. And what I would do is I would increase the light radius. And what you'll see now is it's going to, in the rendering, it's going to soften that shadow. It may take a little bit longer to render, but it's going to soften that shadow out. I might actually need to do it on uh, a different light because I don't think that's really showing what I want it to show. Let's increase that quite a lot more and let's. So it's worth turning up these shadow rays as well. That will give you a less kind of grainy result. Because my scene is so large, I think I have to turn this up quite a lot to soften that shadow. Here it comes. So I could turn it up more. If I zoom in, you'll be able to see that the shadow is becoming a little bit less sharp and a little bit more faded towards the edges. Can you see that? Let's go a little bit higher. Let's go seven. And we'll do the same on this directional light, perhaps. So shadows. And I'll turn up the light angle and they'll turn up the shadow rays and I will render. So at this point, we're just kind of playing around. You'll, be, um, you'll probably want to ch change the colors, keep moving around, come up with different ideas. So for hand in, you want a range of different renders. Get some wide shots, get some close ups on anything that you're happy with. It doesn't need to be anything. Your renders don't need to be anything specific, but you can just use it to kind of um, try out different things get a few different good shots okay so here we are so yeah you can see that my shadows are now much softer um, which can be a more natural look um, for the scene these ones aren't, so this other directional light I could soften if I wanted, but I'm quite happy with the way that is. So I can just file, save, make sure it's on PNG, and save my first image that way. So that's rendering and lighting. If you have any questions, let me know. As I say, it's fairly straightforward. Um, if you get stuck, make sure to email me or just go to the internet because I'm sure you can find help. But I'm in the studio three days a week, so let me know if you need help. Um, and I will uh, see you all soon.